Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. In today's vlog we are taking you to Corfu, the Greek island with the most stunning blue waters. We will show you the most beautiful beaches and breathtaking spots, rent a motorboat and as always indulge in plenty of delicious food. Stay with us and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with our travels. Hello everyone! Today we are in Corfu, Greece. Honestly, this video almost didn't happen as we planned to relax and enjoy the beach without making a YouTube video this time. But this place is too amazing not to share with you. Our first impressions after arriving in Corfu? It turned out to be quite an extraordinary place, unlike any other Greek islands we've visited so far. Here you'll find Italian architecture and lush greenery. The vegetation is truly abundant. But let's start from the beginning. We stayed at Hotel La Maison Corfu and we were really pleased with it. The accommodation options in Corfu leave much to be desired. It's quite expensive and the price doesn't always reflect the quality, so we were glad we found a nice place where we could truly relax. The best part was the pool, which most of the time was completely empty, even though we visited in July, which is the peak season. The location was also very good and if we can give you one piece of advice, aim for accommodations in the northern part of the island to save time and avoid unnecessary driving. This area is where you will find the most beautiful beaches and attractions. The hotel also provided quite tasty breakfast and within a few minutes walk we had an access to the beach and plenty of restaurants. But of course, as always, we also rented a car to do some exploring. If anyone's interested, we'll leave a link to the hotel in the description below. Now let's move to our first day in Corfu when we visited the most picturesque spot on the island, Porto Timoni. Porto Timoni is a must-see in Corfu. It consists of two twin beaches separated by a narrow strip of land surrounded by green hills. The descent to the beach is a bit like mountain climbing. It takes about 30 minutes to go down a narrow rocky path. But we assure you, it's worth it. Make sure to wear sports shoes because it's quite steep. At about three quarters of the way, you'll reach a viewpoint with a breathtaking view of both beaches. Also, bring a lot of water with you because there are no facilities down there, so you won't be able to buy any. Trust me, you'll need it during the climb back up. As everywhere in Corfu, water shoes will also be a good idea. After the climb, it's time for food. We went to a very tastefully decorated restaurant called The Grill and had delicious grilled souvlaki. The Middle Eastern style lamb skewers prepared there are also worth recommending. The dishes at The Grill were a great reward after the challenging hike from the beach. We also have to mention the nearby restaurant Luma Afionas, where in the morning we stopped for an iced coffee with wonderful views. Originally we planned to have lunch here after our climb and the food would undoubtedly have been delicious, but the prices were a bit steep. We spent the afternoon at Egios Georgios beach, located right next to Porto Timoni. As this beach has sand instead of stones, the water isn't as blue and crystal clear, but it has other advantages. It's spacious, wide, and everyone can find a spot for themselves. Additionally, if you're not a fan of steep descents, you can apparently reach the famous Porto Timoni by water taxi from here. We ended the day with dinner at a really nice restaurant called Lord Byron. They serve Greek and Mediterranean cuisine. We enjoyed it so much that we came back the next day. 
we highly recommend trying their mixed dips, feta cheese with honey and cheese croquettes. The mushroom risotto was also delicious. The restaurant has a terrace with a view, making it a great option for a romantic evening. On the next day we take you to the town of Paleokastrica, which includes a coastline with six Turkish coves. These are some of the most beautiful beaches on the island and we'll tell you which ones we like the most. The tiny, intimate Ampelaki beach stole our hearts. It's beautifully located between green hills. The water is crystal clear and has a stunning blue shade. However, the beach is a rocky one, so water shoes come in handy. For 15 euros you can rent two sunbeds with an umbrella providing a nice view of the beach. Additionally, you can rent paddle boards and boats. As you can see, we had a great time there. Right next to it is Agios Spiridon Beach, a beautiful sandy beach with azure water and a gentle slope. Unfortunately it's crowded and finding a spot can be challenging, especially since it's popular with families. The beach is easily accessible with a huge parking lot located just a few steps away. There are plenty of restaurants around, but don't expect extraordinary culinary experiences. They are more of average tourist spots. We had lunch at one of them and unfortunately we won't recommend it in this video. In Paleo Castrica you will find an interesting place called Bar La Grotta, located among the cliffs. It has a lively atmosphere from the early morning with loud music playing, you'll probably hear it from a distance. Interestingly, you can also reach it by boat. We also need to mention Rovinia Beach. It's a beautiful sandy beach with stunning blue water, but the path to the beach isn't very pleasant. Initially it's quite steep and bumpy. Then you will encounter a narrow path through bushes, so it's not one of these easily accessible beaches. On the way to the beach make sure to stop at Liapades beach viewpoint, offering the most beautiful view of Paleoclista's coves. The beach is somehow wild, with no sunbeds or umbrellas. With its watercolor and location among cliffs, it reminded us a bit of Thailand. We ended our day with dinner at a fantastic restaurant called Apovrado. It was probably the best food we had on the island and as you can see views from the terrace were amazing. It's best to go there at sunset, but make sure to make a reservation as usually there aren't any available tables in the evening. However, during lunch time it's not crowded at all. On the next day we rented a motorboat. Despite some concerns, it turned out to be the best thing to do in Corfu. It was fantastic and we could see beaches accessible only from the sea. We started from Alipa beach, a small beach located in the port also belonging to the six coves of Palo Castrica. It's the perfect starting point as the most beautiful beaches are located in this area. We rented our boat at Blue Lagoon and paid 95 euros for 4 hours plus 20 euros for fuel. The beach that stole our hearts was undoubtedly Kolia's beach, with incredibly turquoise and clear water that we hadn't seen anywhere else. Caution, we saw jellyfish near the beach.
Another beach worth mentioning is Homi Beach, also known as Paradise Beach. It's another beautiful beach accessible only from the sea. Currently it's not possible to disembark there due to falling rocks. Nevertheless, there are still many beachgoers who don't seem bothered by it. There are even sun loungers. In Greece, renting a motorboat is hassle-free as no license is required. In the beginning, we were taken out on a round trip of the bay to show us how to drive it. We also received a map with recommended route for the trip as some beaches are inaccessible due to falling rocks. We recommend booking boats at least two or three days in advance as availability is not as good as you might think. After the boat trip, it's time for food. We went to Spiros Taverna in Paleo Kastrica. They specialize in grilled dishes and it was quite tasty, so we recommend this place. Of course, our video wouldn't be complete without Corfu town, which, as you can see, doesn't really resemble Greece. Corfu spent four centuries under Venetian rule, hence the typical Italian architecture. Kerkyra, as the Greeks called the city, is also a shopping paradise. There are plenty of small local shops, many of them selling leather goods. Interestingly, they also sell kumquat liqueur, which has been cultivated here since the British introduced it in 1860. Overlooking the waterfront of the island's capital is the old Venetian fortress, which can be visited for a fee. The first defensive structures here date back to the 6th century. Due to the heat, we decided to skip this attraction and headed towards the city's municipal park, surrounding a quite well-known museum of Asian art with an impressive colonnade. As you can see at the Faliraki urban beach, even in the city center, the water is very clean and has a stunning color. There's no shortage of beachgoers either. If one fortress is not enough for you, you can also visit the so-called New Fortress, dating back to the 16th century, offering a panoramic view of the city. And now something for aviation enthusiasts. You must visit the tiny peninsula of Canoni on the outskirts of the capital, as you can observe planes from a very short distance. In fact, they fly just above your head. On Google Maps, you can find this place under the name Plane Spotting Spot. There is also Vlaherna, a tiny white monastery from the 17th century located on the water. Finally, we can't forget about Ipsos, the town where we stayed. Honestly, it has a somewhat notorious reputation mainly due to its very lively nightlife and loud Italian teenagers. Fortunately, since our hotel was a bit further from the beach, we didn't experience any of that. Ipsos had a good location and what surprised us was its really nice beach. In this area, we also have a few more food recommendations. Is this, is
The place with the best iced coffee and desserts is Evangelia's sweet spot. For a great dinner we recommend Squirrel restaurant with homemade Greek cuisine. Make sure to book a table in advance. And if you've had enough of Greek food, we recommend delicious Neapolitan pizza at La Partenope. Not far from Ipsos is the very beautiful town of Barmpati, where we visited Bahia Mare restaurant, located directly on a beautiful pebble beach with crystal clear water. The food was delicious, but it's on the slightly higher end in terms of pricing. The town itself reminded us a bit of the Italian Positano, as it was really picturesque. We know that this time we didn't manage to see and explore the entire island as we usually do, but for the first time in a few years we wanted to relax on the beach and not to make a YouTube video. However, during the trip we realized that we can't sit still and we made the episode. Corfu absolutely stole our hearts and we saw so many beautiful places that we had to share them with you. If you have more wonderful places to recommend in Corfu, please tell us in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed our vlog from Corfu and if so, make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because there will be plenty of new travel videos coming soon.